Okay, let's move on to lesson three, flight instruments. Flight instruments relay critical information about the plane's attitude, its altitude, and speed during every phase of flight. In this lesson, we'll cover how these instruments function and their limitations so that you, the pilot, will have all the information required for safe IFR flight. The majority of the training fleet presents instruments using the conventional six-pack gauges. While newer aircraft now use electronic displays, these older steam gauge instruments fall into four general categories based on the systems from which they operate. We'll discuss the pitot-static system, the gyroscopic or vacuum system, the electronic components, and magnetic compass. With us in our studio now is Robert Bremer. Robert's going to be your instructor for this lesson, Flight Instruments. Robert, welcome. Well, thanks, Matt. Now, Robert is no newcomer to aviation. His background goes back more than 15 years as an instrument and multi-engine flight instructor. Besides his teaching at Portland State University, he's been presenting ground school lessons for all ratings on video for Stenbach Communications and ASA regularly and developing and delivering corporate training to global clients. Again, Robert, we appreciate your being with us. Now, before we get into it, tell us a little bit about what you're going to cover. Well, Matt, thanks for the great introduction. Mm -hmm. Today, we're going to be talking about instruments. Very good. You may ask why we need flight instruments. Well, prior to the availability of accurate flight instruments, practical transportation in aircraft was virtually impossible. Flight instruments are essential to conducting safe flight operations, and pilots must have a solid understanding of their operation. In addition to the basic flight instruments required for VFR operations, the airspeed indicator, the altimeter, and the compass, operating under IFR conditions requires gyroscopic instruments, such as a rate of turn indicator, a heading indicator, and an attitude indicator. You also need a slip skid indicator, a sensitive altimeter adjustable for barometric pressure, and a clock displaying hours, minutes, and seconds, or a digital presentation. We'll be covering these instruments in detail, how they work and how to use them. We also cover what you need to do if one of the instruments fails during your flight. Robert, sounds fascinating. You've got a lot of information to cover there. Let's get started. Oh, we do. We're going to get started now. I'll see you guys in the classroom. Instrument flying proficiency is the single most fundamental skill to ensure a safe and enjoyable flight. Roger, I'm climbing through 2,300 for 5,000. Nine and go from you. Seven or nine go from you. That matched up a little bit better. You are radar contact one mile north east of the Aurora State Airport. Turn left direct Newburgh on course. Roger, turn left direct Newburgh on course. Nine and go from you. You can have all the best instruments and electronics in your panel. But without these skills, you'll not be able to be proficient and competently conduct your next flight. During attitude instrument training, the pilot must develop three fundamental skills involved in all instrument flight maneuvers. These are instrument cross-check, instrument interpretation, and aircraft control. When executing an ILS approach, the pilot must keep the aircraft on the electronic glide slope. This requires the ability to establish the proper rate of descent for the ground speed. As ground speed increases, the rate of descent required to maintain the glide slope must be increased as ground speed decreases. The rate of descent required to maintain the glide slope also decreases. By first cross-checking the instruments and then interpreting them, the pilot is able to precisely control the aircraft all the way to a successful landing. Okay, let's take a look at a couple of review questions for you. What is the first fundamental skill in attitude instrument flying? The first fundamental skill, A, B, or C? Your answer is B. The first fundamental skill involved in all instrument flight maneuvers is instrument cross-check. Okay, moving along to the second question. The rate of descent on the glide slope is dependent upon which of these? Your answer is C. The vertical speed required to remain on the proper glide angle is dependent on the ground speed when flying on a fixed glide slope. 